Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Goodchild with Premier Dental, and I'm joined today by Dr. Troy Smetting, a good friend and an outstanding dentist. And I wanted to talk class two. So, uh, Troy, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me, Jason. Good to see you. Um, so, you know, Dr. Smetting sent me a case of our new product, uh, Premier X5 sectional matrix system, not too long ago. And I thought it was a great opportunity to get together to talk a little bit about the tools, techniques, and materials that we use to complete class two composite restorations. Uh, we do these every single day in the general office, in fact, multiple times per day. And the way that this works and you know, it doesn't interrupt our workflow and, and you know, it doesn't interrupt our schedule is efficiency. Everything in dentistry should really be about efficiency. And class twos is a perfect example because there is lots of little steps involved and we need to get it done quickly, but we also have to get it right the first time. And so how do we get class twos done efficiently, quickly? Well, that's why we're talking today because I wanna highlight the Premier X5 sectional matrix system and hit on some pearls along the way. So uh, if you're ready to go, Troy, let's jump in and look at the clinical case. So today we're looking at uh, a clinical case, uh, number 12 DO and number 13 DO resins. And again, we'll feature the X5 system, but again, Troy, I wanna hear, you know, what is, you know, what are the techniques and tools and materials you use to uh, make your class twos easy and efficient, and then hopefully end up with that perfect outcome you're looking at. So um, without further ado, I'll look at the pre-op situation. Again, pretty common here, uh, number 12, number 13, DO. Um, and uh, when you see the post-op radiograph, you'll see that you know we were able to make nice small preps in here. Anything you wanna mention here, or you know, should we jump in and look at the preparations themselves? Yeah, I think we'll get started. I mean, this is just your classic traditional interproximal decaying um, on a younger, younger um, patient. So hopefully you can tell that the minimalcy of the preparations is what we're striving for here, especially when you deal with resin-based dentistry. Yeah, for sure. All right, so um, nice small preparations. I think you were going for, like you just said, minimal uh, preparations. And one thing that, uh, and almost a thank you that you know feels like I should say, because not many dentists or maybe not enough dentists, I feel like do this step, which is caries finder. I love the, the idea of back to basics. Is, uh, is that what we're looking here? Is this, you know- you, Yeah, this is just a caries indicator. Um, you know, I use caries indicators a lot. I, I agree with you. I think it's a very important step of, of just having that ability to recognize or give us an aid in any type of detection of decay that we may be missing. Because we all miss it. I mean, there's a certain degree of, you know, proficiency that needs to be accomplished and certainly skipping steps. But this is one I don't skip because I think it's very important because, you know, obviously the longevity is going to re rely on a nice durable preparation with good sound enamel margins, good clean dent. So that's why I use a caries indicator. Yeah, great, great job. I, you know, I think that's just, you know, and at any time, I always remember back to dental school, you know, the cardinal sin was leaving decay. And so, you know, that, that's sort of ingrained in me. And and nice to see it here as well. Yeah, me um, too. Th the next one is, hey, we got our preps done and, and look at this, you've got a sectional matrix system to restore both restorations at the same time. So uh, what'd you think of this, uh, this new matrix system? Well, I think it was great. I mean, obviously when you're dealing with efficiency, you've got to do multiple restorations in a quadrant. I mean, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You can certainly take the time to do one at a time. I have no problem with that. But, you know, I think uh, the patient appreciates efficiency. I think the patient appreciates getting done in the quicker. So what I found with the ring was a really nice, durable um, ring in the sense of, you know, application-wise, you could certainly feel the tension within that resin. I mean, it was an amazing, you know, flexibility yet strength, but also it had stackability and and it had the ability to be placed in opposite directions, meaning it wasn't too big, it wasn't too wide, but yet gave me the visibility to look into those boxes and, and, and get great adaptation. Uh, really forms nicely within the interproximals, is which gives you that nice um, minimalization of the buccal lingual flash. And the overall seal was fantastic. The matrix system that comes in in combination with the wedges gave us a really nice seal, as you can see down in those box forms. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I always look for is something that I can place in a very relatively quick fashion, but yet give me the ability or the adaptability to do multiple restorations within a quadrant. Yeah, great job here. And I love the photograph too, the way you angled it, because, you know, we really like to see at the bottom of that box, that enamel margin, because we know we can get a durable bond down there when we've got a little bit of enamel to bond to. Yeah. So moving on, hey, it looks like you're doing selective etching here. Is that what we're talking about? 
Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a self-fetching uh, guy. I've kind of gone to self-fetching for the last, I don't know, five or six years. I don't think I do much total etching at all. But certainly, I still think an indication is anytime you can get phosphoric acid onto the enamel, do it. That's just kind of my study, my my understanding of the research and what's still out there. I think it still gives you the best enamel conditioning possible. I didn't particularly in this case, I probably could have went down in the box form and tried to be really small with a ribbon along that enamel margin. But I left that. Um, just for the sake of not disturbing the uh, smear layer with on that dent component. But yeah, that's a selective etch technique that I incorporate with, you know, all of my restorations whenever there's enamel. Yeah, and I like the fact that, uh, you know, it, you mentioned it before, you're able to get the rings uh, you're going in opposite direction so that visibility isn't impaired in any way. So you can, you can see everything perfectly. You're able to get your, your uh, phosphoric acid right where you want it to be. Uh, and then, and then I, I assume our next step is going to be, hey, we're going to be rinsing this off doing our application of a bonding agent and moving on to resin. So it looks like here, like resin is already placed. Yeah, so we kind of skipped a few steps here, which most of you kind of understand whether you're an incremental layer, you're a bulk fill, you know, kind of, you know, that's the debate for a different topic, of course. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, so we ended up with a nice restoration. What we're trying to expose here is a little bit of what I did. I, I tend to raise my margin up just, or my uh, marginal ridge up just a little bit. So when I do my finishing and polishing, I'm able to con uh, contour that back just a little bit and create a nice embrasure space. And ultimately what you have with a system or a matrix band in place properly, held properly, is it gives you that nice box form that allows the manipulation of the material to be exactly where you want it to be. And uh, that was what we see here in this particular case. Yeah, yeah. I, I see I see exactly what you're trying to go for because that in sizable embrasure space is so important for cleansability and, and maintaining more of a natural form. And the way that those matrices of the X5 system sort of roll backwards help you provide that. Um, and so you can, you know, get that little explore tip in there if you want to, but, you know, just the matrix themselves helps you contour that embrasure space. So nice. Yeah, 100%, because I think what you'll notice, or most dentists notice, that anytime you don't use anything with a concavity or convexity like you do with the X5 matrix system, is that you get that knife edge finish and you try to go and polish that, and all you end up doing is shredding floss or chipping the marginal ridge, which you case and get with a toffle buyer. So I think that's yeah. definitely the, uh, the true advantage is having a nice, uh, matrix system that, that gives you that concavity convexity contour that, are all, that we're all desiring. Perfect. Yeah, for sure. So here you are. Uh, looks like a uh, matrix system is off and uh, you are checking occlusion. And uh, just what we were talking about here, you can definitely see that you've been able to contour those marginal ridges really nicely. Um, and then also, you know, keep the occlusion off them as well. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately the goal is anytime I can keep uh, occlusion off of a restoration, I usually try for that. Um, whether that's right or wrong, I still think God-given two structures is more durable than probably anything we have in dentistry. And so ultimately, with the contours I'm able to establish with that, the nice rolled marginal ridges and whatnot, I think we've got a win here on this uh, restoration that uh, hopefully will foreseeably be a long-lasting restoration for this particular patient. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing I'm struck by is, you know, um, is your uh, blending of the composite, you know, just even when it's, it's dry here, the, the color matches really looks great. So even when you're zoomed in on, you know, real close to the teeth, it's very difficult to see where the restoration is and, and where yeah. the natural tooth begins. Yeah, it's a nice, uh, you know, there's a lot of nice composites on the marketplace today. Absolutely a lot of them. And a lot of them, as you know, are going towards that one shade universal type system. And whether that's a, a good or bad, that's, you know, debatable forever wants to be there. But ultimately, yeah, the composites we have today, I mean, they're fantastic. I mean, the blendability, the yeah. uh, finishability, the polishability of these materials is really second to none, I think, right now in composite dentistry. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think that that trend will continue as to move towards, uh, you know, we've talked about efficiency, the idea of uh, uh, sh minimizing number of shades uh, from an inventory perspective, from a sort of a universal placement perspective, but really nice job here. Uh, you know, you definitely, you said it's a win. I, you know, I say it's a home run. So good job with that <laughs> color. Uh, and then, hey, final, final uh, restorations. And, uh, and again, we keep coming back those marginal ridges and the color, boy, yeah, really a nice job. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just really nice to be able to finish those the way they do and not a lot of excess overhang and whatnot. And that's really what you're looking for. That's really where it establishes your efficiency because with composite-based dentistry, yeah, we're looking for nice, high-quality finish because that's what the patient wants, right? They're looking for, you know, we're, if we're done with the comparing of the amalgam days because amalgam was never pretty. So we never had that, you know, yeah. that, that bar set. But now we do. So you certainly want something that's going to give you, for me, less time in finishing and polishing because certainly you can spend a great deal of time finishing and polishing but i think if you have a proper matrix in place with the proper band in place you can certainly minimize a lot of that excess work and that's case in point that you see here because this is a two-step polishing system for me one and done and i'm out so yeah. that's what i'm looking for too is is efficiency right i want to do great dentistry but i want to do it as fast as i can yeah perfect so you got uh, you know matrices that sort of buckle lingually you sort of help eliminate that flash and then from the uh, the marginal ridge perspective, like we talked about, help you generate that incisal embrasure just looks really great. And then the last thing I just want to highlight is, you know, when you look at this rest, the, this, this picture, even close up, it's really hard to see the restorations themselves. But th some of the beauty of these newer restorations is radiopacity. And I, yeah. I think that this really tells the final piece of the story that we've been talking about, which is you have a great uh, um, adaptation internally, uh, great radiopacity, and then interproximal form uh, looks looks really really good and i think that's the uh, uh, some of you know comes from the matrix band itself yeah i think the proof of the pudding is that i actually you can actually see the occlusal embrasure spaces open up with the mid contact point exactly where you want the, that to be in relationship to the adjacent tooth and i think that's exactly what you're striving for and that's why we use sectional matrix systems over a toffelmeyer Absolutely. This is point in contact right here. So yeah, I mean, hopefully that was uh, a plug for sectional matrix systems because I think they're an ultimately what you need in dentistry. You can't do good composite dentistry without a sectional matrix system in my personal opinion. Yeah. Hey, great work, Troy. Always great to talk with you and highlight some of your fantastic work. Uh, all the best. Thanks again. Thanks, buddy. Good seeing you. All right, man. Take care. You too.